installing a Craig Tool Company fence on an old Craftsman bandsaw. William Hovey Smith, 2016. I am the owner of a new company, Hovey's Knives of China, and we are putting together our new shop. And in that shop is some old pieces of equipment like this 20-year-old bandsaw. And we are adapting it by putting some modern equipment on it. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. And this is part of our new shop that we're setting up. And we have bought us some new equipment. But like the old saw about the brine, yeah, uh, we have some old stuff too. Uh, nothing barred and blue yet, but who's to say that might not come? This particular bandsaw is one that our bladesmith borrowed about 20 odd years ago and used it and put it up for a dozen years. And we just got it back and we are now refurbishing it. Well, like anything you might suspect, about two decades past, not everything is all that easy to come by anymore. Uh, these blades, for example, are 80 inch blades. That's now an uncommon size. A uh, craftsman had this particular saw made in Taiwan. But uh, you can get 80 inch blades or any other size blades for your bandsaw and have them custom made. And they're not that expensive, by the way. So uh, I have had some blades made for this saw, which are on the way. Uh, this happens to be an old wood blade that he had in hand. And we're going to use it to cut up our woods. Now one thing about the bandsaw and what we're doing, we're cutting very precise thicknesses of woods for scales. Now I did some cutting in earlier videos uh, guiding the things by hand. And I was very quickly informed by several sources that this was first off down dangerous. Uh, second, I, my hands were altogether too close to the blade. Uh, thirdly, I was not getting good control of the thickness. All of which were true. So what we're going to do is put a fence, so-called, on this bandsaw table, which is missing, as you see right now. Well, the thing about this fence is uh, we went to a woodcraft store, which is a national chain, and we in fact bought a fence that does fit some craftsman saws, but nothing that's all. Yeah. Uh, so we needed to mount two screw holes on this table, and no screw holes were there. Fortunately, we do have a local machine shop which does excellent work. And so we took the parts down there and had them drill and tap these two holes. Could I have done it myself? Well, yes, but not near as well or conveniently as they could. And the cost of me doing it is, well, not too terrible much different, actually. So well, we now have the new table ready. And I'm going to show you how we put it on and how we attach the fence. I have just laid the table on the bandsaw itself. The way it goes on and off is this is a piece of cast iron and somehow you have to get it around this blade and that's what this slot right here is for. It allows you to put the table on and off and move it around with the blade on it by doing this sort of stuff like this. So you actually take it and slide it through the slot then you can turn it 90 degrees and there are some pegs underneath that must go through holes in this cradle down here. Free one and the other. So this is a little bit of blind wiggling. One in, two in. Okay. And now it's down in this cradle. And these are used to tighten it up. Now, when I took the thing down there to be drilled, uh, I put this side on there just to make sure they put the holes on the right surface. All right. Uh, so this is part of the fence that the cross piece that will run here and adjust this way rides on. So we can start our holes. 
We can start our holes here. There we go. And then one here. Because uh, Craig makes these for a variety of modern bandsaws, they do give you some choices so far as placing the holes. The more modern bandsaws look a little different from this. Uh, this is very much the traditional design used, oh, wow, even back before World War II. But the modern ones are a little bit different shaped as a rule. And just screw these in with the fingers because I am going to adjust it horizontally with a level. So this is a 11 millimeter wrench that we'll use to scarf it up with when we need it. And of course, now uh, we do have a set of directions. Which being a guy, uh, sometimes to read. Okay. We're now getting to what is actually the fence part of the fence, and that is this member right here. And you use this as a guide to guide your work this way against the blade, and I'll show you how we do that. It's attached by these two thumb screws here that fit through these slots and tighten everything up. Now your rail is attached. So you can move it this way. Okay. And you have your fence up and the surface parallel to the blade. Tighten your screws down. There's a piece of tape that you put in right here so you can actually measure in inches. We're going to stall that in just a bit. But that is basically the rail. Got friction on it here. Once you set it and lock it down, yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. One of the little niceties of the assembly is they do give you a piece of tape here so you can measure exactly uh, what your dimensions are if you want to cut an inch or a half inch or three inches you know exactly what you're cutting and this is a piece of metal with adhesive on the back now I trust it's a pretty good adhesive so you index it to one side I've already trimmed it down as close to the end as you can get and lay it down in the trough here then put even pressure across the top to seat it firmly all the way down and that way you get that nice strip in there now we have some issues with level that we can address at this stage too This needs to move a little bit. We've done our adjustments. Uh, we have the table level in this plane here. It's not level in this plane, however. Uh, that we'll have to adjust with the legs. But the bottom of the fence here is equidistance from the top of this table, which is the critical thing. Now, you'll need room for any cuttings and dust and splinters and anything else to clear under here, I would think. So I believe we just about got it right. So this will move to loosen it up. You can move it to where you need it to be. Adjust it wherever you want, right here. Keep track of exactly where you cut 
put your wood in, raise this to the proper gap here so that your wood will clear and proceed to cut. Now that gave a much better looking cut. Now the result here is giving me a much smoother cut that will take much less dressing up on my belt sander to give me some good fitting scales. I like it. Yeah. A little critter even worked without the blade guy. But uh, it did just fine. And we have our blanks now. And they're comparatively smooth. It'll take me very little to dress these up. And for now, this is Hovey Smith reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. This is our banner again with some of our interesting knives on it. And here is another view of the same prototype knives, and we are making these now out of stainless steel. And we have another series, a Billy Joe Rubido series, where we make knives out of found steels. And this is the bread knife that we're actually making right now and are cutting the new scales for it. Now, I am also the author of a series of outdoor books. Now, these include backyard deer hunting, extreme muzzle loading, crossbow hunting, and practical bow fishing. And all of these are very complete coverage of the subject materials. I also have business books, including ideas for new businesses, and here's a little blurb about me and about my book. Now, refurbishing this old piece of equipment saved a lot of money and also a lot of shop time. For more information on Hobie's Knives of China, you can go to the address below. For information on my books, blogs, and more than 525 videos, you can go to www.hoviesmith.com. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.